So I, I could ask, you know, what goes into building solar panels, for instance, you know, what is so destruct what is so destructive about that? I guess many people, and I think this is a product of living within a capitalist system, we tend to feel a bit removed from the way things are often produced. If we're living, for instance, in the United States, we don't really see where our clothes come from. We don't really see where oil comes from necessarily, unless you're living next to a fracking operation, obviously. Maybe that's not the best example here in the United States right now. But other things like, uh, you know, the way our food is produced or, or anything like that, it's often very removed from our sight, from our general awareness. So what is required to make solar panels? What is required to make uh, wind turbines or batteries or, or any of these things that are being proposed as a part of this this move over to sustainable energy production? Well, to make, you know, to make a solar panel, uh, it really depends on what kind of panel you're making. Uh, there's, there's numerous different process, but, but um, all of them require a kind of mix of exotic and uh, prosaic metals, um, you know, that are largely mined only in specific places on the planet. And, and that's not always because the, the minerals are rare. It's because mines are so environmentally destructive that most people don't want to mine anywhere near them. Right. So so there's 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 places where the country is poor enough or the, the the people are oppressed enough that somebody has decided they'll just ruin everything by putting a mine there. Uh, and these are sort of kind of sacrifice zones um, that are just, you know, rendered toxic so the rest of the the world can uh, benefit from the, the resources that are that are coming from there. So, you know, it's um, it takes it takes a lot of metal to make a solar panel. <clears throat> And it takes a lot of energy to, to mine those metals and to refine them too. Oftentimes that energy, it's hard to make it renewable because it's gasoline and you would have to replace it with a kind of gas substitute like a biofuel, which takes a lot of acres to produce. Uh, you can't simply, you know, you, taking construction and mining equipment and making it uh, run on electricity is a, a, a very difficult technical problem that we're probably uh, not very close to solving. So, you know, so, so that's going to kind of cut into the benefits of, you know, going renewable. Um, then you're going to have to ship that stuff all, all the way across the planet. Um, and then you have to replace it. A solar panel only lasts for a certain number of years. Some of them are about 10 years, some 15. Uh, you're going to have to replace it. Uh, and, you know, and if you do it, if you, if you install them incorrectly or something like that, that's just waste. So, you know, you have to, you have to really think about that, that calculation. Um, <clears throat> And it's the same is true for um, wind turbines. Uh, they, quite, they require a lot of resources and investment up front. And they use a lot more, they take up a lot more space than a oil refinery, as it were. Well, if I could ask this, because I think one of the main arguments that I've heard from those that are proposing these technologies is they say, well, eventually it'll get better, right? We'll have more efficient solar panels that'll be able to store our uh, produce and we'll be able to produce more energy and we'll have batteries that'll be able to store more of that energy and we'll be able to to basically get away from these problems eventually um what do you say to that because that that to me is always an an argument that i'm always like well i I get where you're coming from but yeah i think that's i think that that's um I think that that's completely ludicrous, uh, especially when you talk about storage. One of the problems with renewables um, is that uh, they're not continuous and they're not consistent and they're not scalable um, or what the energy systems people call dispatchable, right? With a, with a you know, coal burning plant, you can simply start, if you need to generate more electricity, you can just burn more coal or shovel more coal into it. Um, but you can't make the sun shine more or the wind blow more, right? So um, you don't have the same kind of abstract capacity to, to, to generate more um, energy if you need it. And, of course, sometimes the wind isn't blowing. And for half of uh, the day, half of our, you know, our uh, the time on the planet, the sun isn't shining in particular places. And so you have to deal with that problem. Now, you could – um, store energy in batteries, or you could send it halfway around the world. But that, if you start, to, if you start adding in that um, s- technology for storage or transmission, then you're talking about an incredible use of resources. Um, and it's also not clear that it'll be, you know, it will take you even longer to become 
um, carbon zero, right? Because you're using so many resources to, and that's where that's where it really becomes impossible. Not only kind of impossibly expensive within capitalism, but also just technically, um, you're you're using so many resources to get energy, and you're using so many energy, so much energy to get those resources that it may not really be uh, a benefit. At least with you know battery battery technologies that that we have now. Um, <clears throat> So there are other, I mean, there are other ways and maybe, you know, I'm not saying this stuff, all of this stuff will be useful. We're going to need to, you know, we're going to need to transform the energy system and we'll need to use renewables and we'll probably have um, some methods for storage. Um, but, you know, I, I, th I think that that is simply kind of wishful thinking that we're going to be able to, to transmit and store our way around the problem. Mm. Well, let me ask, this is a bit of a technical question because it's just really about words and how words are used. Um, people, and, and I'm just as, you know, I, I was often, I have been pretty ignorant of this, I think, as many people are, when the terminology that is used to describe this, there's a, a big difference between net zero and zero, when, mm -hmm. right? And I think it would be good if you could just maybe explain that a little bit. What does net zero mean? Well, net zero means that, you know, whatever, um, it, it assumes that, it assumes that there's kind of offsets, um, that bring you to zero. So if I switch over, if I switch over to a solar panel, um, and it took me a certain amount of carbon to build that solar panel, right? I, you know, all of the mining and shipping and everything put a certain amount of, CO2 and other greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. So I count that, but because that, that capacity is now um, displacing coal energy, uh, which would require, which would generate more CO2. I, 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 um, I assume that I get to zero once um, the amount of, the amount of uh, CO2 that I would have generated uh, from my coal plant has hit the hit the amount that it cost to make my renewable energy, right? So so it's like it takes a year to pay it back. It takes a year to pay back the the CO two that I used to build my solar panel, right? But because in that one year I would have, you know, generated this much CO two with my coal plant, I I, I consider it zero after a year. 